All right, there's four characters this time, so two, two each. All right, okay. so I'm doing Rose and Teresi. <laughs> Oh, actually, ah! Between them, they only get one line each. So should, should I just, should I re-roll that? Yes. Okay. Let me just uh, add Rose back on. Okay, <laughs> Rose again. Okay. Add Teresi back Dirk. on. Okay, Rose and Dirk. All right. So you're doing oh, Teresi and Kanaya. Okay, Gucci. Why are you with Rose? Wait, what's going on? Why would you think something was going on? By which I mean, would you, why would you automatically assume that what's going on has a sinister overtone? Did I say I suspected something sinister was going on? Not with your words, no, but in the grand scheme of things, isn't something always going on? Why would you even ask what is going on if you didn't assume that the thing going on was both normal and untoward? Well, now I definitely think that there's something sinister is going on because you're obviously trying to distract me with the synetics. A tactic I'm sure you're familiar with. Excuse me? I'm just making an observation. You know your wife pretty well. You know all of her tricks, all her little personality quirks. You're confident that you know everything about her, but for some reason you have no idea where she is right now. What are you getting at? Nothing, just making sure we both have a clear view of the situation. Laying out the playing field, as it were. Okay, I'm going to give you another chance. Why don't we start this conversation over again, and you can say the correct thing this time. Sure. Hello, excuse me, but I would like to speak with my wife Rose, whose phone I do believe I am calling, as even these primitive human smartphones have accessibility accurate or caller ID technology. Sorry, Rose phone comes to the phone right now. She is otherwise occupied. Where is she? She's in my place. I'm sorry, what? Rose is extremely ill and I should not be leaving the house alone. What is she doing at your place? Chillaxing whilst we discuss the inevitable heat of the universe and the unknowable, solitary nature of human consciousness. I see. If she is capable of such abstract problematic pro polemics, why is it that she cannot speak with me? That's a damn good question. One, is, one, one that will undoubtedly benefit from further exploration over the course of the next abstract polemic I have of her. Yes, I admit, I'm just fucking with her at this point, but can you blame me when she's making it so easy? Can I have loves Rose, but sometimes love just isn't enough. Sometimes what you need is understanding. You are teasing my patience so early, Dirk. Yeah, I've gotten pretty good at that. Just ask my fans. I am not making a joke. Me neither. I don't really do jokes. Neither do I. I do often make statements which hold varying degrees of ir irony, acidic wit, or dry expressions of amusement. Yes, that roughly describes many of the remarks I make as well. I knew you'd understand. However, my comm my commiseration on this matter should not be mistaken for a gesture of friendship or camaraderie at this moment. Then it seems for us an impasse. It won't be an impasse for very long. It's coming over immediately to retrieve my wife. If that's what you want. Tell me, uh, tell her that I'm on my way. Sure, I'll get right on that. I hang up on her. Rose looks up from where she's suffering on the floor. The shadows around her are growing. She stares at me with glassy eyes. Is everything okay? Yeah, just a telemarketer. You know how these carapaces can be when they want to sell you some chess shit. Impossible to get them off the phone. The server Mina fled through is a distant speck now. You look back and you can't even see us anymore. In fact, you're not even sure you're looking in the right direction. You are utterly adrift, continuing your lazy orbits around a black hole. The only thing you are sure of is the fact that you're bringing life is freshly pilfered from your not so fresh looking hoodie. It doesn't really bother you though. It's not like you had any plans for it. Taking it from a rainier was like a bonus, as far as you were concerned. Extra life ring? Nice, maybe this will come in handy someday. Scratch that now. The young Condes has it and is probably hatching bold new plans as we speak. Not that those plans will ever have anything to do with you. Hours and hours slip by. Your eyes start to hurt, and the wound in your chest starts feeling numb. It's a disconcerting combination of sensations. After all, you think about sending us your wound. There must be something in your dad's body that you could use a bandage to gash. You either want us and try to imagine what could possibly be inside it that would, would be of much, uh, it would be of any use in a medical basis. A straight razor? You'd probably fuck yourself up even more if you tried to perform a surgery. You notice you can't seem to make yourself care about healing yourself long enough to continue in the same ways to MacGyver your body back to health using nothing but the contents of a wallet belonging to a middle aged, shaving obsessed pipe enthusiast. You put the wallet back into your pocket. A glint of red catches your eye just ahead. Then it's gone. No, there it is again, another glint. It's flickering or sparkling in some way. What is that? 
You drift towards it without certainty, worried it's exactly what you think it might be. Yet, you get it close enough to confirm. Two small red slippers co coasted in giant tiny gemstones. Jay's empty shoes are a depressing sight, but you feel a sense of duty to retrieve them. Might as well. You, sec you secure them in their wallet, along with whatever other junk is in there. Your wound is starting to throb again. You can hear your blood in your ears. The rush of your bolts is so loud that it almost sounds like the engine of a rocket sputtering to a stop. Wait, it sounds exactly like the engine of a rocket sputtering to a stop. It can't be. It's impossible, you think, but why would it be impossible? Isn't this what you've got to wear out here looking for, even if you couldn't admit it to yourself? What's, what's the point in denying, denying it now? You turn around. There she is, with her flaming red rocket wings. She hovers in place, not looking a whole lot different from when you last saw her years ago. Her arms are crossed over her chest, making knife-like angles, angles where her, her elbows jut out. She's giving you a look of absolute disregard. It's an expression of exacerbation so performative and habitual, it sends bonds of aching nostalgia and fondness through your heart. Damnly, you raise your hand and give her a dorky little wave. It does not adequately communicate what Zeris is feeling right now, but then nothing else would, you suppose. She waves back, but hearing her voice is what makes it real. You loser! 